Good morning. Today at Toronto Police Headquarters, I would like to introduce Superintendent Doug Kwan. He will be providing the update on the Joint Services Investigation Projects RX and Battery. Thank you everyone, thanks for coming up this morning. And on behalf of our Chief uh, William Blair and our Acting Chief uh, Mark Saunders, I welcome you all to this morning's event. Um, I think just by way of uh, format and introduction, I just wanted to let you know that we have a number of partners we'll, you'll hear about in terms of the, the, uh, the joint investigation. Um, we won't all be speaking on that today, maybe myself, it will be Acting Chief Superintendent Stevenson from the Ontario Provincial Police and ultimately, uh, for the more uh, finite details, uh, as much as we can give you today, uh, will be Inspector Gordon Snedden of the Gun and Gang Task Force, who has essentially headed up and led the uh, two investigations. Um, from the outset, I want to express that uh, what you see here today, uh, we've had the opportunity to bring down some of the physical evidence that's been seized over the past uh, 48 hours and up into it, uh, some of it uh, a few, few weeks and a few months before yesterday. Uh, by no means is it everything, but it's certainly a snapshot of uh, what uh, this investigation has entailed. Um, this is not particularly the venue for the detailed and finer points of evidence. Uh, we'll save that for the courtroom and the disclosure that comes with that. I would ask that you please understand and respect that uh, when we get to the questions with uh, Inspector Snedden for sure. Um, we simply can't answer all the questions at this stage, but we'll do our best to give you a better overview. Um, quite bluntly, as you see the firearms here today, we have, there's a lot of work ahead of us. This is clearly an ongoing and active investigation. Uh, it remains active throughout. We uh, have a lot of work ahead of us to do the forensics and the ballistics and the testing. Thus, that puts essentially every solved, partially solved, and unsolved crimes that involve firearms still in play to our investigation. So we're going to address that as we move forward. But really what uh, brings us here today are two very intensive investigations. Uh, essentially, the, the investigations have been fo focused on two different crime groups, and they've been led as a criminal and orga organization investigation on both sides. Um, as a result of those criminal investigations, uh, they tend to focus on the use, the trafficking of firearms, as well as the, uh, the business of uh, drug trafficking. This has allowed us to examine the rivalry between two opposed gangs and give us a better understanding of the dynamics of the, uh, the violence that does plague our communities at times. And at least from the, from the perspective of all the investigators, this has been and will always be a focus on community safety. Uh, the charges and the methodology of the investigation is a means to get to that point. Uh, our investigations have been very proactive and we've been very preemptive. Uh, we've actually made a number of arrests and seizures uh, throughout this investigation prior to yesterday's uh, main enforcement action. Hence, uh, there have been a number of large uh, arrests and searches that occurred before uh, the enforcement action yesterday. Um, I want to take a moment first to acknowledge and thank uh, in detail uh, all the partners that were involved in yesterday's tactical enforcement action. Uh, we had a number of teams to do uh, tactical entries, dynamic entries where possible uh, at locations around the greater Toronto area and I'd, let, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them all. Uh, I'd certainly like to thank the services of the tactical teams from the, the London Police Service, the RCMP, the, uh, the Ontario Provincial Police, both, or actually of all three, of Peel, York, and Durham Regional Police Services, uh, Hamilton, Halton, Waterloo, Windsor, Brantford, Niagara, Belleville, South Simcoe, and of course our own Toronto Emergency Task Force with a number of teams engaged. And I'd also want to mention, uh, because it's such a collaborative and cooperative effort, um, and we had so many addresses to, uh, to work on throughout this investigation, we also had on standby and assisting, uh, ready to assist for tactical entries, uh, teams from Ottawa, Kingston, Peterborough, Sarnia, and Barrie. I'd like to thank them for their patience uh, and their availability. Um, to lay out the investigative partnerships, I certainly wanted to address from my pillar of the organized crime enforcement section of the Toronto Police, uh, which encompasses mainly the Gun and Gang Task Force, uh, the Drug Squad, and in particular this case, uh, the Financial Crimes and our Asset Forfeiture section. As you see the cash that is before you today, again, it's only a snapshot of what was seized yesterday, not, not throughout the entire investigation. 
Um, and of course, uh, all the people involved in our major crime task force, um, our forensic identification services, uh, court services especially. Uh, it's a very difficult task and logistics of trying to move people around uh, within a very short time window to get them before the courts. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of cooperation, and a heck of a lot of hard work. Um, and of course, our property and evidence, ma evidence management unit to make this all happen here today. Uh, within that structure is also the Asian Organized Crime Task Force. Uh, it's a, a joint forces led investigative unit, which uh, encompasses members of the Toronto Police Service, the OPP, the RCMP, Peel, York, and Canada Border Services Agency. Uh, I'd like to thank our partners also uh, for that investigation as well. Um, and I'd also be remiss if we didn't mention our partners in uh, Public Prosecution Services of Canada, the PPSC, uh, the Ministry of the Eternal Gen General, and uh, the Ministry of uh, Community Safety and Correctional Services. Um, I'd like, also like to make a, a particular acknowledgement at this time because this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It takes months, uh, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, and a lot of streamlined um, focus to make it come to this point uh, where we are today. And I'd like to particularly uh, acknowledge the quality leadership of Inspector Gord Snedden uh, throughout this investigation, and certainly the unquestionable and commitment, unquestionable commitment in professionalism and leadership in the investigative talents of our two lead investigators, uh, Detective Sergeant Brett Nickel from the Toronto Police Service Gun and Gang Task Force, and uh, Detective Sergeant Don McChong uh, from the OPP attached to the Asian Organized Crime Task Force. Uh, they are the two leads of the respective investigations, RX and Battery, that brings us here today. Um, so what I'm going to do as we go forward is uh, I'm going to turn over the podium uh, to uh, one of our speakers here today, uh, which is the Chief Superintendent uh, Stevenson from the OPP to make some acknowledgements. And uh, from that, we'll proceed with uh, Inspector Gord Snedden to give you the, what you're here for today to hear some more of the fine details on the seizures and the totals and uh, give a little bit more broader uh, spectrum in terms of what uh, encompassed the two investigations that brings us here today. Chief Superintendent. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Commissioner Vince Hawks and the men and women of the Ontario Provincial Police, thank you for coming to this important announcement. It's in the name of preserving community safety that we're all here today. Shortly, you will hear details of how members of the Asian Organized Crime Task Force and the Organized Crime Enforcement Bureau have worked collectively to identify and arrest several people who produce and distribute illegal drugs. The Asian Organized Crime Task Force was formed in 2008 to address high-level organized crime issues affecting community safety throughout Ontario. Its mandate includes investigating organized crime elements, working in and preying upon the Asian communities throughout the province of Ontario. The task force is a joint forces operation comprised of law enforcement officers from the Toronto Police Service, the Ontario Provincial Police, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, York Regional Police, Peel Regional Police, and the Canada Border Services Agency. Today's announcement has taken weeks of legwork by members of the task force, managed by Detective Staff Sergeant Dominic Chong. I know from other aspects of our work we enjoy a great relationship and continue to work with a number of partners at the provincial, federal, and international levels on a variety of investigations. I can't say enough about the cooperation and the sharing of information by law enforcement agencies. The Asian Organized Crime Task Force is a demonstrator of success that police services from across Ontario can achieve when working together and sharing our best practices and information. As organizations funded by taxpayers, we continue to do our best to align our limited resources to address community safety priorities. Illegal drugs, illegal weapons, and criminal organizations are consistently among those priorities. Provincial funding is also a necessary component to maintain the Asian Organized Crime Task Force. 
and ensuring that police services and our partners work in a cooperative and effective manner. As you now know, we receive cooperation and direct participation from so many of our part partner agencies during the execution of search warrants this week. Another goal is to take enforcement action against persons involved in the illegal movement of firearms and ammunition. This includes the offenses of smuggling, trafficking, and possessing crime guns to reduce the flow of illegal weapons being made available to dangerous criminals in Ontario. Weapons enforcement in today's environment and with our limited resources is far too big and too important for any one law enforcement agency to manage alone. Consequently, we have once again partnered in our efforts to combat gun crime and address the impact it has on the safety of the communities we all serve. The distribution and use of illegal drugs and guns have destructive impacts on the lives of people and their communities. They can also lead to a wide spectrum of violent acts and property crime involving criminal organizations. I'm very proud of the investigative diligence and cooperation displayed by members of the Asian Organized Crime Task Force and their partners to bring these threats to public safety to justice. I thank every officer involved in this project for your dedication, hard work, and persistence. The professionalism displayed by our police officers is a credit to the police leadership in Ontario. Because of you, our communities are safer today. Well done and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. And now we'll call up uh, Inspector Gordon Stedden for the Gunna Gang Task Force. Good morning, you. Good morning and thank you for being here. The, uh, what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning is the investigations uh, relate to Project RX and Project Battery. Both projects were, as you've already heard, were investigations into criminal organizations who were operating within the GTA, primarily within Toronto, but had uh, a span of control and uh, influence and were interested in areas beyond Toronto. Of course, this is just what we are alleging, but I want to make you aware of certain things. The investigation uh, focused on two, uh, we believe to be criminal organizations, the Sick Thugs, and Asian assassins. And the, the search warrants that were executed yesterday and warrants that have been executed prior to that point in time, I just want to give you some statistics as it relates to what has been seized and what's before you. In excess of 30 fire, firearms have been seized, 1,100 rounds of ammunition, eight sets of body armor. In total arrests for both projects combined, we're currently in 94. And the number of people arrested yesterday was around 50, 52 or 53. Uh, proceeds of crime in terms of cash, Canadian currency, $350,000 in Canadian, $2,900 US and 380 uh, euros. In terms of drugs seized, uh, crack cocaine, uh, 1.3 kilograms, powder cocaine, 7.2 kilograms, Heroin, just over one kilogram. Methamphetamine, 975 grams. Marijuana, 26 kilograms. Ketamine, three kilograms. MDMA, two kilograms. Hashish, 30 grams. Fentanyl, 308 grams. Venacetin, 26 kilograms. Benzocaine, uh, two kilograms. So that gives you a sense as to, as to what the, uh, has been seized as far in the investigation overall. And of course, what we are alleging quite simply is that these people on both sides were involved in a criminal organization whose main commodity was to traffic in guns and drugs. And in the process of doing that, they were quite prepared to resort to extreme acts of violence to support their, their, their task. As it was hinted on yesterday in yesterday's press conference, there has been a homicide component to this investigation. The homicide squad has been involved in the investigation since, since its inception. 
and I can tell you that there has been some significant progress made in relation to the murders of Tony Nguyen at the VV nightclub in January of 2013, the murder of Michael Nguyen at the Yorkdale Mall in March of 2013, <coughs> excuse me, the attempted murder of several in individuals at the Joey restaurant in May of 2013, as well as the murder of Byron Lynn Harris at 35 Empress Avenue in June of 2013. These are still active and ongoing investigations, and the Homicide Squad still need the public's assistance to help solve these crimes. I can tell you from the investigation that's gone this far, there certainly appears to be an indication that there is a direct connection with the Asian Assassins uh, criminal organization. That's it. That's to say that the Asian assassins are believed to be involved and associated to the shootings. Why? That's going to take into the specifics of the evidence that so will come out in court at some point in the future. But do you think that the, all this violence has to do with drug terror? What does it all boil down to? From? Drugs, guns, and then personal disputes on top of that. Do you believe that there was infighting going on with the Asian assassins, or do you think there was back and forth between them and the sick thugs? That an allegation? That's an allegation, yes. The back and forth? Or the back end? and forth, yes. So is there a, a potential, is there a chance for murder charges to then be laid in? You know, that's an investigation. It's active and ongoing, and that's something that I know the homicide investigators are working very hard on, and they're looking for the public's assistance. Uh, any small piece of information, you'd be surprised how small uh, that piece of information need, to, need be just to... Uh, advance the case from where it is right now. But they have made significant progress. Did these homicides spark these two investigations? No. Were they running before? The, uh, the two investigations were sparked because of our interest in, in both gangs, both criminal organizations. So while the investigations were underway, these shootings happened, is it fair to say? Shootings have occurred while the investigation has been underway. And I can tell you that uh, at different points in the investigations, we had to take ac action and steps to disrupt uh, future acts of violence. Is that you mean to make arrests, or how, what sort of steps? I'm not going to go beyond saying disrupt. Can you say we're live safe because of those actions? Because of Certainly people were uh, saved from injury. Now, you had mentioned, or someone, maybe it wasn't you, uh, but uh, that this gave insight, gave what police knew insight to how the gangs operate. Uh, can you elaborate on what makes this investigation different or what, what insight police may have, have garnered? Well, I think what makes this investigation different is the, the willingness and the, the amount of activity both in the, in the drug and, and the gun trade, but also the willingness to resort to violence at the drop of a hat. But that's always been the case with gangs. Mm. And my understanding, I mean, people do act out violently to protect their turfs. It's a question of degree of violence. This is above and beyond what you've seen with street gangs in the past. Is that what oh, you're they're saying? far more. This is a far more. These are two criminal organizations whose main business is drugs and guns. That's it. It's that simple. Are those two groups work for larger organizations? No, no information in relation to that. Are there? Uh, shootings or murders that uh, you have found that are linked to the sick thugs at all during this investigation? There, there are other shootings that are under investigation, yes. So what has this done to the status of these two gangs? Are officers confident they are really crippled these operations now that they've made these seizures and arrests? Well, we're happy with what we have done, but there's lots of work, to, work still to be done. How are you alleging these two gangs were structured? Was there a hierarchy? Were there kingpins on either side? There's a hierarchy, but that's something we left to come out in court. Is there anybody charged with instructing for the purpose of the crime? Yes, and you actually you'll get a list of all the criminal charges and all of the accused and when they'll be appearing in court at the end of this uh, press conference. And you'll see in there that most of the charges are, in fact, in, in just that, the uh, criminal, criminal organization based and directing the activities of the criminal organization and acting in, for the benefit of the criminal organization. Weapons that surprised you? Any kind of findings during the rides at Sergeant Reeves that surprised you at all? No, the only thing is, it's not surprising, but it's something we're seeing uh, 
some development toward is uh, four of the guns seized uh, came from domestic sources. What I mean by that is they came from uh, individuals who had legitimately purchased the firearms and then recycled their own collection into the criminal market. Asian-based type gang? Is, could you say that? Asian-based is where they start, but they don't, they're not strictly Asian, no. And what about the sick thugs? What kind of commonality, would, common um, interest would they have? There's more, sick thugs is more a question of geography as to where they originated from, but where they originated from is not what they represent now or where they live now. That so Park, that's where they started, yes. And Asian assassins being Alexander Park? Approximately, yeah. But you're seeing them around the city, like what you would consider members of these gangs, you're seeing stationed around the Toronto area and beyond. They're around the city and uh, and beyond, like so the, and that's why, you know, like so some of these guns were seized in Peel region. The, uh, like so it's, it's not isolated to just the Toronto. Over what time period do you think that these two alleged gangs have expanded their operations from the downtown Toronto area? <coughs> Is this a recent phenomenon, or do you think it's been going on for years? Well, it's been developing for years. Are you in the process of trying to link um, any of these weapons here to any of the crimes that you mentioned or any other shootings in the city? All of these, all of these firearms that you see will be examined both uh, forensically and also to verify what they actually are and be able to establish in court uh, what, the, what they're used for. Was there one of the locations uh, from yesterday's raids where most of either the money, the drugs, or the weapons were discovered, or was it just... No. It's a variety of locations. Do you do you believe that you have killers in custody right now, just not facing murder charges yet? I'm just not going to comment on that. So. When was this this evidence seized? Uh, was it was it all yesterday, or is it over a matter of time? Or the majority was yes. Well, that's not entirely true. A substantial amount of it was was yesterday in, in relation to the, the uh, certainly in relation to the drugs and the, and, the, and the, the currency, the guns over time. Operating in places like Guelph, Windsor, and these other police areas that are credited in this investigation? I mean, are they there right across southern Ontario and Belleville in the east? Is uh, extending it that, that far? We've, we've seen link, links between both gangs outside of the province. Which provinces? As far across to, as far across to Alberta. And how are the other police forces involved in this? Well, well it's, it was already uh, related. It's, it's too large an investigation to simply burden one police agency with it, both in terms of finances and also physical resources. So that's why you have to partner with all the, the police agencies. But the real benefit to that is you bring in all those skill sets from those other agencies and make the best of that. Are you expecting more arrests? I'm always expecting more arrests. Um, any monetary amounts are, or um, uh, amounts that are linked to the drugs, let's say the, the marijuana that was seized, for example, it seems so huge. I'm the wrong person to be asking the street value of drugs. I'm sure there are people here that could answer your question. Can you tell us more about the guns that we're seeing here? Again, there are two officers here in particular who will gladly tell you the history, not the history, but certainly the, uh, what these guns were manufactured for and, and what they actually are. Inspector, these are some pretty heavy-duty guns that we see here. How concerned should the public be that stuff like this was pulled off the streets? Well, first of all, I'd be very happy that it's no longer on the street, but I'd also be concerned as to the mechanisms as to how they, they actually access and gain these firearms. Do you have any estimate on how many guns would have been trafficked by these gangs? I'm not going to comment on that. So. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That concludes today's conference.